Time once again for Shelton City Council looking ahead. Now with Mark Ziegler. Now, Mark, are we going to call you acting interim city manager? What are we? What is your a title here? At this point, it's interim. Yeah, interim. Okay. Yeah. Some might call it acting, but uh, we're going to. The official title is interim. Interim. So interim city manager Mark Ziegler. Looking at Tuesday's agenda, a couple of proclamations. Uh, but I want to talk about the thing that stuck out in my mind first off is the a purchase and sales agreement for property on North 13th and public yeah. hospital district number one. Yeah. Tell me what that's about. Yeah. So the city has had 7.32 acres on two parcels that um, border 13th Street, just across from the hospital campus, Mason Health's campus. And that's been in city ownership for Longer, believe it or not, longer than I've been at the city of Shelton for mm. 29 plus years. So, <clears throat> and as uh, the last few years have progressed, we've looked at all of our properties within the city um, ownership and tried to determine whether they're useful, they have useful purposes to the city of Shelton long term, short term and long term. Uh, these properties were determined not to be of useful service to the city of Shelton. Uh, so, the council took action to uh, surplus these properties uh, last year and through that surplus process it then gives staff the opportunity to look for opportunities to dispose of these properties mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> one of the natural partners were mason health this county public hospital district one uh, since it's immediately adjacent to their campus um, the, to the north where um boy the the name is um escaping me of the street but uh, where medicine shop is and some of the mm -hmm. clinic offices are over there <clears throat> and then right across 13th Street from their main campus, uh, Mesa County Hospital District 1 had interest, uh, mutual interest. Uh, so we've uh, negotiated a purchase sale agreement that will benefit both parties. Um, the city's water fund, which um, where the property was purchased and housed, uh, will benefit from the sales price. The hospital gained some property for future expansion and Right, critical uh, health services for our community long term. So, we really believe this is an opportunity to benefit both entities and uh, continue a great partnership. And the funds for this go to the water fund, then you're Correct. saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, properties that are owned by the city can be owned by certain funds, whether it's sewer funds or water funds or, you know, the general fund for um, streets and things like that. Um, water treatment plant would be obviously sewer, uh, wastewater treatment plant. And then uh, water department has certain properties where well sites are located, uh, certain infrastructure like that. Uh, there is some water lines and some utilities on the property, but we can certainly uh, maintain an easement for those properties, uh, for those utilities. Um, there's also the terminus of the Teresa Johnson Trail, the northern terminus on there. And the hospital district has graciously agreed to maintain that trail easement and access long-term. So if and when that property is developed for their uses, there will still be public access uh, through that property down to the Teresa Johnson Trail that uh, would terminate down on Laurel Street near the uh, library. So that's a great public benefit and a great partnership that was worked out through this uh, negotiation. So the other thing on the agenda, <clears throat> six-year tip, but that's Transportation Improvement Program. This is official action. How important is this plan? It's very important. Um, it's it, it's our roadmap, right, for the projects and our capital improvement plan uh, for streets and pedestrian projects. Uh, it also um, allows the city to be eligible for, for state and federal funding. So it is it is paramount to um, applying for those funds. Uh, we are not eligible without an adopted um, transportation improvement plan, and so it's. You know, it's at the top of our list to get completed every year. Update that as projects fall off the list, or update it as uh, more as other priorities might move up the list and up the ranking, uh, and therefore um, up up the priority list for funding. Last item on the agenda is that terrible word annexation that people <laughs> seem to go crazy about. But this is one parcel, Meadows Edge. Can Meadows you Edge, tell us yeah. what that is? Yeah, Where Meadows is Edge is about 40 acres just north of the Shelton Springs subdivision. Uh, Shelton Springs subdivision is uh, just just north northeast of Shelton High School across Shelton Springs Road. Uh, so this is 40 acres that is currently in the UGA. 
Uh, it's one owner. They're seeking annexation and um, use of city utilities. And so typically when uh, a property owners want to access city water and sewer and utilities like that, uh, annexation is required. And uh, this is mutually agreed upon um, with the property owners and the resulting uh, development will, I think it's about 36 prop, uh, parcels. And so potentially 36 uh, housing units that would be uh, built in, in this new uh, 40 acre subdivision. And that's on the action agenda, so you'll be approving that. And it's just a notice. Just a notice, camp. correct. Yep, first there's, step. There's, right. As there's remember in the Peacock, yeah, as remember in the Peacock Ridge process, there's, there's, a, there's a notice of intent to annex that the council considers, and then they'd actually petition for the annexation after that. So um, we will have this back in front of the council uh, at the appropriate time and have the opportunity for public comment at that time as well. Okay. So that's just some of the uh, items on the agenda for Tuesday night, six o'clock courtroom in the Civic Center. You can come in person, you can watch on uh, Zoom, or you can check it out on the city's YouTube channel. Right. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity.